everyone, and welcome to Coffee Break. We're here with Father Caparis and our guest, Ryan Mulligan, and we are drinking from our new official Coffee Break mugs. Yes. <laughs> Courtesy of our production staff, Father Joe. <laughs> yes. Father, would you open us with a prayer today? Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, today is the Feast of St. Andrew Bisset, but uh, we have just, uh, yesterday, we celebrated the Feast of St. John Newman, who is a local. Uh, someone who was the fourth bishop of Philadelphia and at some point uh, the a bishop of this area in South Jersey. So I'm going to use the prayer for St. John Newman uh, as our opening prayer today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. John Newman, servant of God and man, you desire to bring all souls to Christ, inspired you to leave your family, home, and country. Ask for us the grace to live worthily in the spirit of our baptism, so that all our thoughts, words, and actions of every day will bring God, our Father, greater honor and glory. Ask for us the grace is necessary to help and to serve the poor, the suffering, and the oppressed. May we live as you lived, persevering in every difficulty, to know and to do God's holy will. In this life, may we share your intercession the protection of Mary, and the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, As I said earlier today, we have a special guest, um, our Echo Apprentice from Notre Dame, Brian Mulligan. He's in his second year here, and uh, <laughs> we are welcoming, welcoming him to the program. <laughs> yes, we welcome Ryan. I'm not sure if <clears throat> those of you who... Uh, uh, might have seen him around the parish, perhaps, uh, you know, at Mass. I know, Ryan, you, you, you also come to the daily Mass in the parish, so some of our parishioners might actually already be familiar with you. So, Ryan, welcome to, to our show, to Coffee Break. And we have been meaning to have Ryan as our guest uh, here at the show, and I'm, I'm glad that he's finally able to, to make it uh, here with us. So, Ryan... Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, where are you from? Uh, and um, what does it mean to be an apprentice and all of that? What, what's this about? What's what your role here in the parish and what you're doing with your life? Right, so um, I'm originally from Lansdale, Pennsylvania, about 30 minutes outside Philly. Um, born and raised there. Uh, I went to Lansdale Catholic High School and then I went <coughs> on to the University of Dayton uh, Marianist institution for college. Um, right now I'm in the ECHO program for Notre Dame and I'm an apprentice, right? So what that looks like is um, I'm getting the most experience I can in a job working for working for the parish, right? So last year I started off observing and kind of helping out with a bunch of different things such as religious education classes, confirmation prep, um, stuff like that. And then this year I got a little bit more responsibility, so um, still helping out in things like um, Catechesis of the Good Shepherd with our little kids, but then taking my own classes for um, third graders, for the younger kids, and for sixth graders, for the middle school kids, um, helping out with RCIA and RCIC classes as well, and so basically just trying to get a wealth of knowledge within the parish. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so you're... Uh you're a local. You're you're from Lansdale in, mm -hmm. in that area. Where did you go to, to school, Ryan? Uh, high, grammar school or, or high school? Yeah, so I went to, for grade school, I went to Corpus Christi. Um, and that's in Lansdale. And that's in Lansdale. Yeah, I, I could have walked to school. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did walk to school sometimes. And okay. then, yeah, and then Lansdale Catholic for high school, which I also mm -hmm. could mm -hmm. walk to. So, okay. Yeah. Mm. And um, what... Um, what inspired you to, to go into this program in Notre Dame, to um, uh, the, the one you're studying in right now? A lot of things inspired mm. me to do it. Um, I've always been a fan of Notre Dame football growing up. And I so can you, see that with your you shirt. You think over, about yeah. that, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, it's that. And then um, I had friends go through the ECHO program when okay. I was at the University of Dayton. So um, I had friends who were a year older than me, friends who are my year and then friends after me. Um, I am an older apprentice, so I went and worked in the Air Force first for three mm. years. And okay. then um, as I was doing that, um, 
it was it was a good job and it, I gained a lot of experience but I felt like something was missing mm -hmm. I felt like um, I could be doing more um, especially within the church mm -hmm. um, so I started to started to ask God like why <laughs> why am I still doing this Air Force job I, I think I should be doing something else and so um, in speaking with one of my really good friends he actually had asked me to be his best man, and he was in the ECHO program. So I visited him. We spent a lot of time together. We roomed together in undergrad, but then through that, through those conversations we had as we grew closer, um, it started to pull me. And I was like, okay, God is definitely saying something through Brian. Like, mm -hmm. this is absolutely it. And when I visited, I met his community. I got to see what ECHO was all about. And I was like, all right, this is for me. Mm -hmm. So what finally put me over the edge was um, I did a the consecration to Jesus through Mary. And as I was going, I was like, okay, this is going to be one of my biggest things I'm talking about, I'm thinking about, I'm asking, you know, for Mary's intercession for. And halfway through, I was like, I think I'm not going to do this. <laughs> and I'm talking to my friend, and I'm complaining about it. And as I'm walking, I see a ringlet, like, of the rosary on the ground, just at this mall that I was with my friend. And so that was my little push to say, no, nope, keep going, <laughs> keep going. This is where you're supposed to be going. And so eventually uh, applying, getting in, being placed here. Mm -hmm. Wow. And um, the ECHO program, tell us a little bit more about that. Um, when you go, when you enter the ECHO program, are you preparing for this, for the same kind of line of work in the church or does it differ? What's usually the main thrust as part of the ECHO program? Right. Tell us a little bit about that. So, the creator of the ECHO program, uh, Professor Cavadini, he always likes to tell this funny story, but to make a long story short, um, he found that people respond, younger kids respond to younger faces in the classrooms, right? So he tried to organize this program where um, kids coming out of college could go into ECHO, and then get the degree, get the qualifications, get the on-the-job training, and reach these kids um, in a way that's easier, I suppose. But Because mm -hmm. um, what you're working on is a graduate degree. Right. So that's the purpose of the ECHO program is to <coughs> study, get your master's in theology, and then have that two years of experience before going out and working in the church after you're done. Mm -hmm. So that's that's like the main goal of the ECHO program, to to equip leaders in the church going forward. Okay, and what kind of what kind of leaders um, can you give us? Are, are they all different in when they come into the church? Like I know you're, you know you're you're involved in uh, our catech catechetical programs, some of our youth programs in here. But after you leave here, mm -hmm. what's you know? What's your plan, or where 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 do you think you'd be heading? Um, I don't know where, okay. <laughs> but okay. I know that I really enjoy, I feel like I do a good job of, and um, I feel like that God is calling me to, to uh, minister to high school, college age. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one of the placements where the ECHO program um, I see. graduates go. But a lot of my friends, a lot of prior ECHOs have gone and worked in parishes, campus ministers or teachers in high schools, mm -hmm. and then campus ministry in college whole host of different, you know, getting involved with um, just academic life and continuing to study your degree. It's been a whole host of different things. We actually, um, in my class, we're going to have one of our classmates is going to enter um, into a religious order, I think, out in L.A. Mm. And so just hearing about that, that's another avenue, obviously, mm. that you can take when you're <clears throat> answering God's call in mm -hmm. this way. Okay, okay. And... Um do you have any any thoughts or ideas as to what kind of placement you might you might fit in or you would like to be considered for, or that maybe you're considering? I so I'm I'm looking at colleges right okay. now. <laughs> okay. Uh, that that's where I would like to be. You want you want to work in a college setting. Yes, okay. I want to work in a college setting. That would mm -hmm. be my first uh, choice, and then mm -hmm. also high school, and um, those yeah those are definitely my mm -hmm. top too. And what would what would these placements be Ryan are they um, are they mostly in this area are they across the country yeah I know you mentioned Los Angeles Spella, but <laughs> so know. the echo placements where are yeah. they yeah so they are all over the country and there's actually one 
in Ireland this year. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I am here in the Arch in the Diocese of Camden, but there's also another community in the Archdiocese of Newark, but mm -hmm. then also all over the place. Like there's two in Florida, mm -hmm. there's one in Indiana, there's two there's one in Illinois, like it just continues to be all over. And there's more out west than um, over here, but mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And what's uh, what what kind of uh, tell us a little bit? I know you work closely with Meryl as well. She is your mentor. Your mentor. Right. Okay. Supported, God bless you. <laughs> he needs to be blessed. <laughs> part of the uh, part of the program is that um, they're placed. The apprentices are placed in a parish um, connected with a mentor who also has graduate level work and, mm -hmm. and experience and stuff. And it's really helping them to, um, the mentor's role is to process, help them process what they're going through and maybe help direct them or help them to help to refine um, what it is they're learning. And, mm -hmm. and you know, how, how does this work? And why is it this way? And, and how can I change that? Or how can I fix that? Or how can I how can I adjust to that? You know those kind of things, and so mm -hmm. it's a it's a um, a mentor apprentice relationship where it's you know um, a friend and you know and actually someone too. Like when Ryan leaves here, he'll he's here for two years and he'll be finishing here at the end of May. So you've but been here for two years already. Oh. Almost, yeah, <laughs> almost yeah. two years. So okay. he'll be leaving. He'll be leaving at the end of May. But you know he can call me or email me or you know guess what's happening here I got a problem I need help you know and so it's it's that it's that kind of connection that you can always reach back Net on. networking in a sense right. too yes. yeah right. yeah absolutely yeah right. and uh, so so Ryan you've been here a year and a half and you're you're finishing up your your last few months here with us. Um, tell us a little bit about how has your experience here been I mean I know I can't you came here before I did so. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how has it been in the last year and a half or so? <laughs> so I studied <clears throat> business in undergrad. So <clears throat> this has been completely really? different than <laughs> any one of my experiences beforehand, <clears throat> mm -hmm. right? Working in like corporate America and then also in the Air Force and then working in a parish. It's completely different. But right. I've learned a lot of, I could say, so skills that are transferable in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. Um, but I, I've learned a lot and I've learned how to, especially how to, conduct myself in front of classrooms that are, you know, you're pulling answers out of kids or you're, you know, trying to shut down the circus that's happening <laughs> in order to show them. So I, I've right. learned a lot about my own personal faith, how to explain the faith to others, and then, um, you know, tons of things in between. Mm -hmm. So you definitely, it sounds like there's been growth. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. absolutely, yes. Plus the fact that, he, that you're not having a, a normal um, apprenticeship experience mm. in that we've had a shutdown, mm -hmm. we've had COVID, we've had all these restrictions and stuff. So it's, you know, it's not, it's not the same as we've had with previous apprentices where you're just kind of going through the daily life and figuring mm -hmm. it out. There's all this other stuff on top of it too. So well, what's, what's that? I, that's, that's interesting. That's an interesting, um, you know, remark. Um, you, I guess you, you have a way to compare your, your first year versus your second year uh, how's that different I mean how, how has that been Ryan um, so obviously more of it takes place on zoom uh, yeah. than it has in the past and that's not ideal it's not desired but um, it's it's still it's working it's doing mm -hmm. its job um, relationship building is a little bit harder mm -hmm. because yeah. even just the um, nonverbals that you get from people when you can only see this part of yeah. them, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you're not necessarily picking up on that. But you have to um, be more creative about it and stuff. Definitely, yeah. especially when you're in the classroom with kids, you need to, you know, get them engaged but keep them away from you. Mm -hmm. And so, in a lot, of, and from each other, which is yeah. more of the issue in a yeah. lot of ways. But yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely taking a lot of creativity. Mm, wow. And uh, do you think that? what we're going through right now with the pandemic and with all of these virtual um, meetings and, and classes, do you, do you think this has any bearing uh, with, with what you might be doing after Mary Mom? Well, I kind of hope no, but <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Um, yeah. It's a good experience to be able to, to be able to adjust and bounce back and, mm -hmm. you know, and, 
that kind of stuff because you never know what the Lord's going to throw in front of you, you know, and the Lord might say, oh, how about this? And you'll be like, really, Lord? Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it, it's. I think it's good in a in a safe environment to be able to, to have that. And, you know, what do I do mm -hmm. with this? Oh, I don't know. Let's try this. We're all kind of winging it, you know? Right. So. Well, I, I hope so. I hope that it would not be so either because, <laughs> I, you know, I... Um, I am, as, as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still in contact with many of my former students who are now in college. And I do have to tell you, they, they, they are suffering. Oh, yeah. They are suffering in the midst of this pandemic. Excuse me, my, my phone is like uh, uh, on today. But mm -hmm. um, I, they, they're suffering through in the midst of this pandemic. And, um, you know, and I'm not just talking about academically. Uh, no, I'm I also, didn't. I'm talking about mentally, psychologically. This mm -hmm. has been tough on college students. Um, and I'm not sure if even maybe more so than, than high school students. Because I think at, so, too. Because at least with high school, you know, you're home and there's still a sense of, of normalcy. In college, you kind of look forward to being away from mom and dad. Mm. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so well, I... Well, it's all the things that you were expecting, you know, seniors yeah. in high school aren't getting to do some of the senior things that That's they've been right. working for. And, right. and the same thing with, with college, you know, senior... The college kids are, you know, looking forward to campus life, and mm -hmm. they're having campus life on their little screen, yeah. you know, because yeah. they're remote or whatever that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So that that might be that you know, Ryan, that might be the the terrain, the environment that you're going to enter in. Mm -hmm. you, you know, God willing, you, you know, your your first choice of working with college students that mm -hmm. might be an area that you uh, you're going to have to to navigate through, and perhaps. You know, you going through this in your apprenticeship year, mm -hmm. maybe it better enables you or equips you to yeah. to mm -hmm. uh, to empathize perhaps with those with those kids who are going to be coming out of the cave. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, yeah. and your experience too. The times that you were supposed to return to another mm -hmm. game, you, you weren't able to do that. So you also have that kindred spirit, that kindred experience that you can share with them too. So that's yeah. yeah. Learn how to use social media effectively <laughs> in order to facilitate, you know, knowing people. Actually, you got to check plus in that <laughs> I, I had the uh, <laughs> the pleasure to be interviewing my classmates in order so that we would all meet each other at least a little bit um, through Instagram. So that was mm. um, that was an experience for sure. Mm -hmm. But wow. again, getting people to form a little bit of a community. Even even now, kids can still go back and look at the interview with their mm -hmm. classmates and kind of get to know them a little bit, especially if you're placed overseas. You know, the difference between um, Dublin and somewhere like Portland, <laughs> like all those hours, you, know, you don't really get to see those people often. Mm. So having that as a little interface in between is definitely helpful. Wow, so you have classmates uh, in different parts of the country. Yes. Okay. Or world. Uh, or in the Ireland's world. the first one. The that's, first one. Yeah, okay. Overseas. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And you have someone. Uh, who, you have classmates from Ireland. Or. Um. No. They're then, just. They just got placed there. there I have classmates there. from all over the country. I see. Um. And then some from Central and South America. Okay. But most have been on the western side of the world. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think maybe. Um. I think maybe in a in a couple of in a couple of cycles because they're two year cycles. You might actually have some students come from. Ireland. Oh, we did two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's just I since it's two year cohorts. Mm -hmm. I only got to see him for like a week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So um so Ryan, what what do you think? You know, again, just kind of looking back in your last year and a half in here, what what do you think has been some of the more memorable experiences you've had with Mary Mom, and and perhaps challenging aspects of, uh, of your time here at Mary Mom. Yeah, w one of my most memorable uh, moments here was last year we got to do a Saint Scavenger Hunt. Mm. Um, Jill, our youth minister, kind of let me just run with it. <laughs> just like think of a creative way to get kids to, you know, know about saints. So we created the scavenger hunt where, you know, we give them these little blurbs of where they need to go, who they need to find out, and it would be about a saint, right? So it would be this saint was a, like a great athlete, for instance. And then there were was this little station where they needed to act out different sports for St. Sebastian. Mm -hmm. And then they needed to go to, you know, different areas. You know, St. Paul is, he's known as one of the 
um, patron saints of, I think, untires of knots. So we had them do the human knot, and they needed to like undo it with their little group. So there was these different um, stations, and it was a lot of fun because the kids were running around mm. in their little group trying to figure it out, asking questions, and you know, this was pre-COVID, yeah. but it was still, it was a blast, mm. um, for sure. And mm. then um, one of the more challenging moments. Mm. Hmm. I think one of the more challenging moments for me is um, I like to have conversations with the kids mm -hmm. and so sometimes when you're talking to them more about like I need you to sit down and you need to pay attention like with the younger kids um, it's been a, a growing experience I've learned how to reach them but sometimes you're like can you please sit <laughs> like, <laughs> I just want to get through this That's and then right. we can like do an activity to reinforce it but at the same time you know I never thought I would have to do that and then being in there mm -hmm. I had my experience with it last year watching and then you know, now it's so much different being the only one in there, but it's still been a good experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would venture to, I would venture to think that a lot of those kids are probably a little more energetic being in person in class, when so many of them are still online yeah. at home and stuff. So even though you don't have as many of them, you know, a chair, I have to sit in a chair. Yeah, you know? absolutely. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So that's more challenging, definitely. Wow. Well, Ryan, I mean, definitely it's been, uh, it's been great kind of watching you uh, work through our youth programs, our catechetical program. Ryan also has been uh, very helpful in, in helping me um, prepare for our college retreat that was really supposed to take place this week, but because of, of COVID and all the different restrictions, we have to postpone it in June. And, uh, but, you know, Ryan has been, you've been instrumental in, in, in helping me prepare some of our college students with that. How has that been for you? I, I know that, you know, we've, we've, we've had the opportunity to work with them a few times. How has that been for you working with with some of these college students, even remotely? Has mm -hmm. that uh, affirmed your 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 own um, current vocation or mm -hmm. where you might be heading? Or has, has you, have you gained many new insights or... What, 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 tell us a little bit about how that, briefly how that experience has been. Yeah, so obviously leading um, nights where we meet and talk about the retreat has been completely different than what I'm used to with yeah. like the younger <laughs> kids. Um, but the, the interactions, the questions, the, the level, I guess, of understanding has been inspiring. Mm. Like you see these kids from mm -hmm. all different schools, you know, some of them are at Catholic colleges, but some of them are not. Mm -hmm. um, and you you see this desire in them and that like that's this you know fuel for me it's exciting. just just to see yeah. them get excited about it like wanting to give talks wanting to do a prayer activities mm -hmm. um it gets me pumped and so just mm -hmm. seeing that is like yeah this is absolutely what i yeah. want to do <laughs> yeah. um, and especially even with that's like great. some of the high schoolers we have here just being able to spend time with them seeing them get excited about faith like that excites me mm -hmm. and so just knowing that having that be reinforced um, is yeah definitely helpful. even even though it is virtual it's there and, yeah. and and you know you can only imagine of course if it was in person mm -hmm. you know and and that's that's uh hopeful that that's our hope for you that's our hope for all of us is that um sooner rather than later where we will have that more of that opportunity to be to interact in person mm -hmm. because that's that's who we are as, as catholics as christians you know we are we 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 follow the, an an incarnational principle, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. We're we're not just. And we were created for relationship. And exactly. And being together. Exactly, and, so, and we're not created for 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 virtual right. interaction. Right. <laughs> you know. I mean, it's a blessing to be able to do that as right. opposed to not being in contact at all. Exactly. But it it pales in comparison to being it does. In, in person. It does, and and again, it, it's it's wonderful that we have the technology. We have the technology to be able to. To um, you know, for instance, go on this show and 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 be present to our people who are homebound and at home. But you know, at the end of the day, it, it's you know, even for me as a pastor, I would prefer to to meet my parishioners in person. I would prefer to to be with you than than for you to look at me through the screen. You know, uh, I mean, I I don't look as handsome and beautiful as Meryl on the screen, <laughs> so you know. <laughs> More so in person than online. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, uh, but but in reality, that that's that's what we all long for, and uh, you know, and and please God that that will happen yes, very very soon. 
So, um, so anyway, we thank you, Ryan, for, for joining us for this episode of Coffee Break. And um, we will be back again for another show. And, and we're hoping to have, uh, Ryan mentioned Jill, our, our youth um, coordinator. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping to have her on the show as well to maybe uh, share with us some, some of her thoughts and, and some of her uh, plans upcoming for for our youth program yeah. so uh, so thank you ryan and thank and uh a pleasure to to have you join us for this coffee break let us close with a prayer um again as we uh, as we end the show in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen, amen. Uh, during this time uh, we lift up in prayer especially those who have asked for our prayers uh, we remember all of the people in our parish particularly who are uh, suffering and uh, or dying, and um, and we pray for all of our young people, especially in our parish community, uh, those who are in high school, those who are in colleges, uh, that the Lord will strengthen um, them during this difficult time, and that they might find the resolve to persevere um, as they continue on, uh, like the rest of us during this time of pandemic. And let us pray, our Father who Lord. art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, have a good afternoon, everyone, and see you again soon. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>